I got to tell you that there are people you can meet with uh, that do financial planning for you, help you walk through some of the, the minefields and the markets and all, but they have different designations. And, mm. uh, and our following guest, he's going to explain that again. He's done that on the air with us before. Jim Woolley is joining us in the studio. Thank you, Bill. Top story. And your microphone's on. See, that's a that's really good. good start this time. That's right. News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. And uh, we'd like to we'd like to mention that uh, that's something people need to, to know is that absolutely a lot of people they can work with, but um, you know it, your training levels are different, mm -hmm. uh, your certification is different. Maybe mm -hmm. give them a little background on that to start. Sure, you know a lot of people remember the movie Forrest Gump, right? Remember Forrest Gump said, "Life's like a box of chocolates; you never know what you're going to get." Uh, I think financial advisors can be the same way. Just because somebody has that title, you never know exactly what they do. But when you work with a certified financial planner, they've got a very specific level of training, a very specific set of skill sets, and they have to do continuing education. We have to subscribe to a higher level of ethics. We have to do all sorts of things to keep that certification current. And you can know exactly what areas they work in, like insurance planning, investment planning, mm -hmm. retirement planning, estate planning, college education, those types of things. Uh, and so when you look for something to work with, you at least know that they've got a basic skill set that you can use. And I think in the Magic Valley area, I looked recently, there's about 35 folks that have investment licenses. Uh, and there's about five of us that are certified financial planners. Uh, and there's two of us that are independent, which is also very important. You, you, you work for your client, you don't work for a firm. So I would encourage folks to check that out. You can go to cfp.net to read all about certified financial planners. And you can also find them on their website too. And we've got to point out, I mean, the numbers, you think 35, but when you think of the population now around here, there aren't many of you. There's not a lot of advisors, correct, right. <laughs> and even a few CFPs. We, we wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the market situation, and mm -hmm. we were just chatting about a piece in the Wall Street Journal where... A little scary. The writer says, it's scary, but he said it really shouldn't be right now. Right. If you look at the first three weeks of the year so far, it's been a heck of a ride. Mm -hmm. We saw the market go down almost 600 points yesterday, and it's up almost 120 today. Uh, but I think, keep it in perspective, there's a lot of analysts out there that are saying that, you know, we think the market's overreacting to China. Mm -hmm. We think the market's overreacting to oil. You know, and if you're not living on those investment dollars today, if you've got time on your side, it, the market going up and down is a good thing. You just keep putting your money in. When the market goes down, you buy more. When the market goes up, you buy less. If you're getting closer to retirement, you know, watch those things pretty carefully. Work with somebody to develop a strategy. But if the news is spooking you, and I hate to say this for, for somebody who's in news radio, but you know as well as I do, if the news is spooking you, just turn it off for a while. When, when this fellow wrote that column, he pointed out, he said, China is big and it will have some impact. But mm -hmm. he made it, he made, I, th I think, the point that we have bigger trading partners just in Canada and Mexico alone. Correct. So he said that while the developing nations may hurt, in fact, I heard a guy on CNBC say last week that in the long run, this there's short term pain, but this is going to be good for the USA. Mm -hmm. It is. It, it, it's always good when we're manufacturing things and, and people are buying them, other people are buying them. And China grew really quickly. It was a developing nation. They've grown really quickly. And I think they're going through some growing pains, too, of thinking, oh, my goodness, we grew a little too fast. Uh, and their folks were consuming a lot of things, and they've backed off that consuming a bit. But we shouldn't freak out just because the news is negative or because the market goes down. Keep your plan going. Keep your saving going. My grandma always said saving money for a rainy day is a good thing. That hasn't changed. Keep preparing for the future. We have a caller with us. and A caller, you're on the air with Jim Woolley. Go ahead. Good morning. I'd like to ask your, your guest a question about the market. Is, is, is it substantially different than it was 40 years ago when people used to make investments and just watch their investments? It, it's seems to me like it's turned into a giant casino anymore with all the in and out and mm. the futures. And, and that, and, and am I wrong in that in that estimate? Well, if you think about the folks on Wall Street, they're very smart and they're very creative. And they're going to find ways to make money no matter what, because that's what they do. And, and investors can benefit from that, too. But saving money, buying good quality investments like companies that have been around a long time that know how to make money and manage money well, that's a good thing. Buying things like indexed funds that are low cost. Watch those fees. Low cost, buy and hold, and don't panic. You know, I saw a graphic a long time ago that showed 30 different types of investments or asset classes. And one of the worst performing asset classes was U.S. investors uh, because we panic. You know, the, the stock market has grown a lot over the last 80 years, and the average investor hasn't done that well because we make emotional decisions. Take that emotion out, and you can still do pretty well.
Think long term yeah. too. Can you define futures for me and how they work? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> well, in in this area, being uh, uh, having a lot of agriculture, we understand corn and wheat futures and things like that. And basically, you are betting. You're trying to lock in a price today, and you don't know what it's going to be. 30, 60, 90 days from now. And if, on a futures contract, if you say, hey, I'm going to buy so many bushels of corn at X price, you're hoping that that price goes up and then you can sell your contract and make a profit. If the price goes down, you don't sell your prof your contract and you don't make a profit. But you're you're trying to guess where the market is going. You know, Yogi Berra said, uh, things are tough to predict, especially the future. And you've got to be really good at that stuff and stay on top of it. It's not something I recommend for, for kind of the everyday investor. I want to thank him for the call. We've got more with Jim Woolley coming up after the break. It's uh, coming up on 8.30. It's 28. Uh, Bill Colley with you as well on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Gasoline uh, futures, right? I mean, it's a future market. That's oil. right. It's uh, not going to stay low forever. Right. <laughs> We've got more on the way in just a few minutes. Stick around. We have a guest in studio today, and we're talking a little bit about uh, uh, markets and the like, and, and mm. perhaps patience, and uh, and and Neil's or what is it? Nerves of steel. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> words. Uh, Jim Woolley joining us, and again, a certified financial planner. Yes, sir. So that's CFP for short. Yes, sir. And if people would like to actually get in touch with you, how do they go about doing it? I think the best way to go is is check out our website. It's jwooleyfinancial.com, two O's and two L's in Woolley. But if you Google Jim Woolley or J. Woolley Financial, it comes up. Uh, and check out the website. You can learn a little bit about us and me and my background. But then the phone number's on there. There's email on there. If you don't want to call, if you're nervous to call, you can send me an email. I'll reply to it. But if you want to sit down and talk, I don't charge for that first kind of meeting because we're getting to know each other. Just have a conversation. Let's come over to my office. We'll have some coffee. We can meet at Starbucks, whatever you like. And, and just... Let's talk about what you want to do, and by the end of that first hour, I'll know if I can help or not. Most people I can, but I also want to make sure that the our personalities fit, that it would be a good fit for us relationally. Because if you think I'm the greatest, smartest financial planner in the world, but you don't like me as a person, we're not going to have an honest relationship, and it's not going to help. I had a, a business manager I worked with at a radio station in the early 90s, and he got me, this mm. was a guy in-house, in but he mm. got me involved with the Voyager uh, Fund at the time. But I remember he he sat me down and he said, okay, what are your goals? Yep. What do you want when you get here? Yep. What do you want here? And then what he did is he, I was in, we divided it up into multiple areas. So we mm -hmm. were just talking markets in the last segment of the program. But someone can come in and you don't necessarily steer everyone to the Dow or the S&P no. or the Russell. You, you, nope. you, there are multiple options people have available. Correct. As an investor, there's always that trade-off between risk and reward. The more risk you're willing to tolerate as an investor, the more reward you should expect, but it's over time. And the less risk you're willing to tolerate, you know, we're not going to get that big of returns, but we need you to be comfortable because as an investor, you shouldn't be laying in bed at night awake worrying. You want to be comfortable. And when we don't get comfortable, we make bad emotional decisions and we sell investments at the wrong time or we try to time the market or we chase returns, none of which really help in the long run. So having a well-diversified portfolio, you know, Mark Twain said, don't put all our eggs in one basket, right? Have lots of baskets, watch them carefully. That's really a good way to invest for long term. And, and for people you mentioned earlier who might be retiring soon, mm -hmm. they're a little concerned if they've got money in the market, mm -hmm. but I'm sure there are ways you can translate that into something else even at this moment Correct. where they can, they can feel a little bit safer until they actually get to that retirement date. Correct. There's all kinds of products and services out there that are available based on what the consumers need. There's some that guarantee income. There's some that guarantee your principal. Uh, and there's ways to blend those together. Not all those products are right for everyone for all of their money because uh, they've got some different features and benefits you want to be careful of. But there's ways to craft a plan uh, that is right for you. My wife had an aunt, and we talk about the market, mm. uh, and, and the aunt was a longtime investor. She, 20 years ago, she was probably already 80 years old, but she'd been in the markets for 60 years. And mm -hmm. she used to tell us, because the caller in the last segment referenced people using it like a casino. She used to mm -hmm. say, uh, she said, I'm I'm about the dividend. She said, that's how traditional mm -hmm. investors do this. I got invested, and I wait for dividend checks. Yeah. But she said, I don't just keep selling stuff because the price is high or low. She said, right. I hold it, and I worry about that. that at a different point. Well, what she was really saying, I'm about the dividend, that means I'm about the income. I'm investing for income. So if you're buying good quality U.S. companies, their stock, they pay dividends. 
And if you're buying good, high-quality bonds, they pay interest or income. Mm-hmm. And really, that's what she was saying. She was saying, I've got a bunch of money that I've put into some good investments, and what I'm concerned about is the income. Typically, the market going up and down, the value of stock prices going up and down and bond values fluctuating don't affect the interest payments that the bonds make don't really affect the dividends that the bonds pay because once a good company starts paying their dividend, their shareholders like them to pay that dividend, so they keep paying it. And a company that pays a regular dividend means they know how to manage their cash and they know how to run their business. And so those are good companies to have. That's And that's a really good long-term strategy that it she is. had. It is. And, and the strategy still works today. And sometimes simple is the best. You know, you can have all kinds of of interesting and exotic investments. They're all out there. The last caller reference futures contracts. There's oil and gas contracts. There's equipment leasing, all kinds of fancy stuff that might offer tax rebates and all these things that sound important. But simple is the best. If you can't explain it back to your friend over coffee, it's probably not something you should do. And someone who could walk in and say, look, we got about a minute, but if they've got a hundred grand and they say, what am I going to do with this? You could say, well, maybe a little goes into the market, mm-hmm. maybe a little goes into land, real mm-hmm. estate, maybe a little goes into some precious metals. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't overdo any of these things, but mm-hmm. but that's the idea of mixing it all up. And again, it's goal driven, goal driven. What are you trying to achieve as an investor, as a soon to be retiree, as somebody that needs income? That's really what needs to drive the process. Because when your goals are met, it, the market going up and down is less painful. When you know my plan is this and we're working my plan and we're doing a good thing and I'm on track, market going up and down, you can take that a little easier. Keep in mind, though, the only constant in life is change. That's right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jim, only we want to thank you for coming by today. Thank you. We'll probably see you again sometime soon, I would imagine. Absolutely. And uh, and for those folks, again, who'd like to reach you, what's the phone number? The phone number is 410-2701. Again, 410-2701 or jwoolleyfinancial.com. We've got more on the way. Bill Colley with you as well on Top Story this morning on News Radio 1310 KLIX, NewsRadio1310.com. I do want to mention coming up before the end of the program today, the governor of Oregon has issued an appeal to the federal government to remove the folks from the Malheur Wildlife Refuge. We've got details on that later in the show.